Hi, I'm Georgina, International Neurodiversity Coach. So this week's article, this is my fabulous sum up. This week's article is about a hybrid word that's coming out called Adaha, if you were trying to say it. Anyways, it is A-U-D-H-D. So basically it is autism and ADHD merged. And what you should know about that is it's not uncommon at all. Actually, the statistics are 30 to 80% of individuals with ASD also have symptoms of ADHD, and that 20 to 50% of those people with traits and the determination of ADHD have ASD um, also as part of their diagnosis. Whether they maybe are aware of it or not, that's a different thing. And that's part of what this article is about, is making more and more people aware that neurodivergencies um, neural differences, different thinkers cross over from one label to the other. I know I talk about it all the time. I don't mean to be boring you, but I really want to make sure you understand how often that kind of happens and how important it is to know those traits. Uh, so areas that are often overlapping, these are just the common ones, fidgeting, difficulty with friendships, creativity, interrupting, insomnia, OCD tendencies, executive function struggles, emotional dysregulation, depression and anxiety, sensory issues, hyperfixation, restlessness, and stemming. If you don't know what some of those are, I highly recommend this is your opportunity to do a little more searching. Learn, learn, learn. Remember, I'm always teaching, let's learn more about that and how you and it relates to you. Where are ADHD and autism different and this is where it gets kind of interesting. ADHD is about attention, and a lot of it. And ASD is more of about social communication, interactions, other things, restricted interests, repetitive behaviors. So those are kind of the differences where they see, but as I talked about some of the earlier things. Um, some of the options that I talk about in the article about growth opportunities and some coping skills for for people that have this more hybrid, and there is another hybrid that we'll talk about later on, which you just, you can add in that dyslexia. Sometimes there are people that have all three easily. Um, one is more dominant, but the others are right in there. But right now I wanna talk about coping and growth options for that, the autistic ADHD kind of hybrid. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, social skills training, um, medication for the ADHD, if that's a right fit for you, if you've tried that or not, or decided all good, that is one of the coping mechanisms, so don't be sending me all the hate. I get it, everybody's different. Um, I, and occupational therapy. And my favorite, working with a coach. Get to know you better. That could be one of the best coping mechanisms out of this whole thing. So. Read the article, lots more details. This was just the overview to get you interested in and understanding this whole new kind of term. Again, not official, not something coming out from the DSM group, the psychiatristy group, because that's, they're not always on the forefront of a lot of this stuff. Remember, they're on the back end trying to explain this to the masses. Um, and so this is us on the forefront. Those of us working in the neurodiversity field see this and have talked about this for quite some time. So don't be surprised if you find yourself being like, well, I have a lot of these things that fall into this ADHD traits, but then I have a few other things that I just don't know if they belong somewhere else, but I'm definitely a different thinker and it's not kind of like everybody else. Maybe look into that more autistic side of things. You might be surprised what you find. I'm Georgina. Thanks for joining me. Please read the article and there'll be more information coming up. Bye now.